Well, good morning to you. It is a Thursday. That's the good news. We're one day away from Friday, the 28th of January. Are you all ready for February to begin? Because one way or another, it's around the corner. And uh, we're going to get you through this work day on this Thursday. We've got a great show lined up for the next half hour, your HCC news and information and more. So stick around for that. Frank Cooper is joining me from his house Good morning to you, Frank. Doing some pinch hitting this week, filling in for Brittany, who is a little busy this morning. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's always, telling, it's always great to be here. No matter if it's two days a week, three days a week, I'm just glad to be here. Well, good hey, to guys, see you. It's, it's Thursday, but, but, but same old thing. If you want to catch the latest episodes of Up to the Minute, just uh, just look up HCC on YouTube, type in Up to the Minute for our latest interviews, campus interviews, what's going on around all our campuses. We're also on social media as well. So Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, all of, all of those platforms. So check out the show and let's grow the show. All right, so Frank, we've got a couple of special guests this morning, but uh, first, if Fazil Lakini, is it Lakani, Fazil, is that how you pronounce your last name? Yes, Lakani. Lakani, Fazil, thank you for being here. You're the co-founder and CEO of Reuse Textile Recycling Service. We appreciate you being here on our Thursday Virtual Family Fun Day. We're going to talk more about your service. If you have some clothes you may want to be donating, stick around. We're going to have information on that when we talk to Fazil in a few moments. Stand by, Fazil. We'll be with you in a few moments. But right now, we want to introduce Farrell Prestige. She's our Chief Information Officer and also the co-chair of the Black history committee here at HCC. Good morning to you, Farrell. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Todd. Thank you for having me. And uh, we're looking forward to a grand event with our Houston Community College Black History Committee Scholarship Fundraiser this year. Yeah, you know, usually we have these events in person. They're a big gala, but obviously we had to pivot a bit uh, in, with the, in the wake of COVID. Tell us what you have planned coming up because you're going to be doing something virtually where everyone will get a chance to participate and watch your event and most importantly, donate. Absolutely. So uh, as COVID has introduced a number of challenges for all of us this year, we've uh, reverted to a, an online remote interactive uh, fundraiser for this year. So this year we're going to feature a number of our students and I'm hoping that everybody tunes in because these students have a lot of information to share with us about their successes and much of their uh, success stories that they credit to HCC. So we're very excited about that. In addition to that, we'll have a number of uh, engaging uh, online or e-entertainment types of activities as well as a keynote speaker that we're very proud to uh, announce this year. Tell us about um, the, the date of the event and where people go, can go to find it in the time. So it, um, the, the date of the event is February the 25th and it will be held online again at 3 p.m. There are a number of ways that you can reach it. The easiest way, though, is to go uh, to either uh, the foundation uh, web page or, and or you can find information about logging in to the uh, event via a number of social media opportunities, Facebook, et cetera. And you can find that on www.accs.edu slash black history. And that will get uh, you to all of the information that you need. We have information to uh, for not only for participating in the program, but also for those that are willing to and looking forward to donating uh, to the event uh, for some very deserving students. We have opportunities on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, kind of you name it. So uh, uh, we're looking forward to that. And again, www hccs.edu slash black history. And I, I don't think people realize enough that uh, the position you serve as the co-chair for this committee, but these positions are volunteer positions. Uh, your employees with HCC, but this doesn't have anything to do with your job. These are groups that meet and people that meet 
outside of your HCC role and uh, to serve on this committee because your your goal is to raise money for people to go to school. That That is correct, absolutely correct. And um, at this time, I uh, would like to pause and thank the committee of volunteers. I am the uh, co-chair along with Donnell Cooper this year. And uh, we all, as you said, actually have full-time permanent jobs with HCC in some capacity. Uh, but we are very much dedicated to uh, supporting these uh, very much deserving students. And many of them, uh, as a result of the pandemic, have some greater needs for financial assistance. And so the funds that we raise benefit these students, they support them, and in many cases allows them to uh, ensure that they can finish their matriculation here at HCC and go on to other, uh, uh, to another four-year college or university. It also sets the stage in many cases for them to go directly into the workforce. Right. And so uh, although we are uh, volunteers uh, that and workers, our, our real jobs, our first jobs are that of uh, positions that we have with HCC, we are very much dedicated to this cause. Tell us about the students that you've helped over the years and the amount and the funds that you've been able to raise through these galas that are now virtual online. Oh, absolutely. And um, also, as I, as I stated, uh, we're going to honor uh, um, and some of the students that have we provided scholarships for in the past. Over the course of the uh, many years since 2006, the um, Black History Committee started in 2006. And although I have been a supporter throughout that period of time, I didn't actually become a member of the committee until about four years ago. And so over the course of that time, we uh, supported hundreds of students. Um, just recently, our most recent event, we raised in a day uh, in excess of $30,000 to support wow. students. Uh, for some that might not seem like a large amount of money, but when it translates into a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars to a student that uh, might afford them the opportunity to purchase a laptop or Wi-Fi, particularly in the current uh, pandemic situation, and or to pay for actual classes. That means a lot to them. So we've helped hundreds of students uh, and raised, uh, 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 you know, thousands of dollars between uh, from the period of two thousand and six up until most recently. And I know you bring in some uh, popular MCs to host the uh, event. You've got one this year, and maybe you can tell us about uh, some of the speakers along with the MC. Oh, absolutely. So uh, from back as far as 2006, when we've had keynote speakers such as Clarence Page, uh, James Earl Jones, uh, Soledad O'Brien back in 2009, um, and moving forward, Julian Bond, Vanessa Williams, uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, and many others, just to name a few. Uh, we're very excited, however, this year, because uh, to add to that illustrious list of speakers, we're privileged to have uh, Cambrell Marshall, uh, our one of our favorite meteorologists oh, from yeah. KPRC TV2. Uh, Cambrell is a friend of ACC and a supporter of BHC. Sure is, yeah. Um, and has been for a long period of time. So we were very excited to have Cambria. And if, uh, if you want to participate in the 2021 campaign, are there levels of giving? How does that work? I imagine you're taking any and all donations, but there are there certain levels you can give? Oh, absolutely. We've made it uh, uh, easier this year to give in terms of online giving. We have a number of levels that we've associated with uh, different degree levels, if you will, uh, in academia. So we have a summa cum laude um, a level. We have a, uh, a scholarship giving level. And so we have a number of levels um, ranging from uh, $500 and even below that. Again, as you expressed, we'll take uh, any donation is not too small. And sure. uh, as well, there's not any donation that we consider too large, but we made it easy. And if you go to the site and the day of the event, 
Um, it's very easy. We have li uh, links to a number of uh, opportunities to give. And um, it's a win-win uh, situation, not only for the students, because uh, as an affinity group of the Houston Community College Foundation, um, which is a 501c3 organization, then your contribution is a tax deductible con contribution. Farrell, we really appreciate the work you do with the Black History Committee. I also want to give a shout out to Dr. Mike Edwards. I know he served as the chair for many years, and we appreciate the, the work he's done. And, and Deborah McGoy, I know she does a lot of hard work in this committee as well. You guys put on a great event, and we're looking forward to February 25th. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for the shout out to uh, Dr. Edwards and to Deborah McGoy. Uh, Dr. Edwards had been the uh, chair for some time and so we definitely want to be uh, um, to offer him some uh, thank you and uh, and to show our appreciation for his participation uh, and the successes that he the successful fundraising that he's afforded us over the past several years so thank you and thank you for having me this morning Absolutely. Once again, the website address hccs.edu slash black history. We will have that link in the social media post. Stay safe, Farrell, and we hope to see you in person soon. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. We're going to move on to Fazil Lakani. And Fazil is the co founder and CEO of Reuse Textile Recycling Service. And he's joining us for Thursday Family Virtual Fun Day. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, Todd. Thank you for having me. So tell us about uh, your service, because this is a unique opportunity um, for families to really get together. One of the things I did during this, um, during the shutdown in the quarantine is we, uh, we had to move and uh, I was able to purge a lot of the things I wasn't wearing and give them away. And now you're offering a solution for families who may be in the same case, or maybe you're just cleaning out your closet for spring cleaning to where you can donate these clothes to where it'll for a good cause, right? Right, so Todd, uh, we just heard from Farrah. I think first of all, uh, commend you guys, you know, for for doing this, and you know, I think the work that she's doing is really grassroots and and helping uh, students. I think that's where everything starts. Uh, but just you know, to what Reuse is doing, I think we heard from Farrah. A lot of the organizations couldn't raise funds in the pandemic, right? So Reuse comes in. And Reuse says, you know, a lot of these smaller nonprofits that don't have the logistical arm like the larger corporations, Reuse will come in and pick up your clothes and, and you can pick a charity that is our partner and we would take your clothes, convert it to dollars and pay the charity on your behalf. So that's what Reuse does. It helps raise funds for organizations like the Houston Area Women's Center, the Women's Fund, child advocates, and the list goes on. But the important thing to understand is these organizations cannot have galas, cannot have fundraising mm -hmm. events, they need your support. And we're coming in, taking your clothes, converting it into dollars for these organizations. Fazil, you just said something, you kind of glossed over it, it's a game changer. You guys pick up the clothes? Yes, we, we come to your <laughs> doorstep and we'll pick up the clothes. All you need to do is go to our website, which is www.reusetrs, which stands for Textile Recycling Services, Reuse Textile Recycling Services, so reusetrs.com, and sign up, and we will come to your doorstep and pick up the clothes. Of, and and you know when you sign up, you get to pick your charity of choice. Okay. Uh, although we have all the charities listed, this month is focused on two primary charities, which is the Houston Area Women's Center and the Women's Fund. Um, so if you pick one of those, we will pick up your uh, clothes and we will donate the proceeds to the Houston Area Women's Center or the Women's Fund. So you guys take the clothes, you donate, um, and from what I've, I'm also reading through some of your, uh, uh, some of your facts, and it's interesting because obviously people donate old clothes. Some of them may have holes in them, you know, and you look at them, you're like, nobody wants to wear this anyway. But you guys have a way of working with that, with separating the clothes for ones that people will use, as opposed to clothes that are just really would normally go in the trash. Right. So we get we get questions from donors saying, hey, you know, I have usable clothing and I have torn clothing. What do I do? So we're trying to take, you know, the pain away. All I'm saying is put everything you have. We'll sort through it. 
whatever is reusable it will get it'll, it'll end up in you know third world countries or it will get a second life and whatever is needs to be truly recycled it'll be converted into either home insulation material wow. or pillow fillings and stuff like that so we will do all uh, we will pay the charity for all the textiles we don't discriminate so once we get all the clothing we would pay the charity and then we would work with the clothing and figure out where it needs to go and we i mean our objective is to save it from the landfill so that's what we'll do so um, we know how you said you'll come out, you go to your website, which we'll put the link in the social media post for the show. But if you want to donate, you go to your website, sign up, and you guys set up a time for a pickup and how that's going to work. But uh, if you're a nonprofit in Houston, you know, I do have some friends who actually run some nonprofits or um, maybe have some, some homes that offer as, as shelters. They work with those agencies. If a nonprofit wants to get involved with you, how do they do that? And what type of nonprofits do you work with now? So, Todd, this, you know, we don't, I mean, everybody's welcome, right? Our, our website and our company is a platform that we want to enable nonprofits to raise funding. Right. So there is a on our website, you can click on the become a partner link and you can fill that form and we will work with that nonprofit. Every nonprofit is different. Some have locations where people can drop off clothes and we will come to that location and pick it up. Uh, there are churches that we work with that do a Sunday garage sale kind of event. And then we would show up and take all the surplus clothing and pay the church. Uh, so every nonprofit is different and everybody is welcome, you know, uh, if you're larger, you have the logistical ends to make something like this work, if, you know, that's fine. If not, you need our trucks, our locations, we'll help you do that. Uh, so we'd work with every nonprofit. And do you guys um, partner with other nonprofits to go out and team up with them to collect clothing? Um, and maybe you can mention some of the ones that you work with. So we work with, uh, again, we have, a, we have a pretty large list now, but uh, I can tell you every nonprofit is slightly different. So we work with Clothes by Faith. Clothes by Faith is a, is a nonprofit. They have two locations where people donate their clothes. They make goodie bags and give away the clothes for free, right, uh, to the needy people. But then whatever is left, so they have two drop-off locations. So we go to that location and we would pick up the clothing. The other option is for someone like child advocates, they would they, they, they do a drive, right? They do a drive every quarter where people sign up and we do about, we did about 450 pickups for them, the last clothing drive. So we went to everybody's homes and we picked up the clothing. Daya is another nonprofit in Houston that works for the women who deal with domestic violence, right. mainly, mainly the Asian community. But what they decided last time was we picked a spot in Sugarland because most of their community members are in Sugarland. And we picked up a clubhouse in Sugarland where we sent our trucks and we did a little outreach event where people would come and they would donate their clothing, learn about Daya and see how they can support and get involved. And we have another event actually coming up at the end of March with Daya, where we're gonna do it in Sugarland at a community center where people can come learn about the organization, donate their clothes and leave. Um, so every, like I said, every charity is different. We'll work, we'll custom, yeah. we'll custom our service, customize our service to meet their needs. But the goal is to get as much clothing as possible and convert it into dollars for the organization. We're talking with Fazil Lakani. Fazil is this co-founder and CEO of Reuse Textile Recycling Service. If you've got clothing you want to donate, this is the way to go, folks. They're going to take the clothing, uh, tear it out, decide which is usable, which may not be usable. But then they take this clothing and they can donate it to a charity of your choice. And they work with a number of nonprofits around the city, as we've been finding out. Fazil can folks donate other things besides clothing? Do you work with other items, other household items that people may be getting rid of? Yeah, Todd, I think for people, just clothing, they think like it's what you wear, but no, we take everything textile. So it could be linens, blankets, comforters, bed sheets, all home, home textiles. We can also take handbags, toys, uh, you know, hard and soft toys and shoes as well. So everything that's in your closet, pretty much, right? Or, or, or any textile in your home, we can take all of that. 
So folks, here you go. You're looking to do some spring cleaning. I know Frank might be interested in doing a little spring <laughs> cleaning around his house. But if you're interested in doing some spring cleaning, this is the way to go. Get a hold of Fazil and uh, at Reuse, and we'll put the link to their company in the social media post for the show. Fazil, we appreciate you joining us on this Thursday. Stay safe, and once again, thank, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Todd. It was, it's, a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, folks, let's move on to some HCC news and announcement. Frank Cooper joining us from his humble abode. Uh, Frank, we got some, the Texans continue to be a burning, flaming dumpster fire. Um, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Folks, if you haven't heard the latest with the Texan, Texans, stick around. We've got some bad news coming up. Anyway, all right, uh, Veterans Resource Fair. Good news though, HCC, we got some incredible things going on, Frank. Uh, we've got a Veterans Resource Fair, which is happening, uh, looks like in a couple, two weeks from today. Absolutely, and the great news is they're sponsoring a Veteran Resource Fair to learn about the community and educational resources available for our veterans. So that's Thursday, February 11th from 10 a.m. to noon. RSVP by Tuesday, um, February 9th. For more details about that, uh, email lewis.polancodeleon, D-E-L-E-O-N, at accs.edu. All right. And HCC Northeast has a town hall coming up, Frank, with Dr. Monique Umfrey, the president. And uh, you'll, she'll be joining you virtually uh, as she gives the state of the college uh, gives her state of the college address in words of encouragement to the students of HCC Northeast. It's also followed by a Q&A with Dr. Umphrey. You can join her Tuesday, February 16th, 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, through the WebEx platform. Uh, the event is sponsored by the Northeast Student Government Association and Student Life. To register, check their district, check, check the district Facebook page, H Houston Community College District. Go there. You can register for the event with Dr. Umphrey. Uh, Student Life has launched Eagle Chats, Frank, and they have one today. Absolutely. So got questions about your uh, experience at HCC? The Office of Student Life has answers with Eagle Chats, a virtual Q&A series for the bookstore, financial aid, library, tutoring, and technology. So remaining uh, this week with the library section noon uh, today, uh, and then also noon on Friday with the bookstore uh, for, for Q and A's about that. So any more any, any more information about that? We have links in our post after the show. Okay, Rec Sports, you know them, you love them. Well, they've got a number of things going on today is virtual recreational sports fair. It's on Zoom. Students choose between four sessions to learn about virtual activities, the status of club sports, and Rec Sports Council. You interested in that? Well, students will all have chances to win prizes, e-gift cards, those always come in handy, and Rec Sports swag. They got some cool t-shirts they're giving away. Uh, uh, that's happening on Thursday and also the virtual scavenger hunt that's happening as well and Super Bowl pick them that's right Super Bowl is coming up Frank's one of the most excited people here at HCC about the Super Bowl yes sir uh, yep Kansas City Chiefs man he's all about that anyway uh, they've got a Super Bowl pick them for more information you can email them at sports at hccs.edu uh, financial aid, Frank, I think they're taking in-person uh, appointments, but only if you contact them ahead of time and schedule one. Absolutely. So for those who are who are in need for tuition and books, the financial aid office is accepting in-person appointments only. No walk-ins. Repeat, no walk-ins. So go online to book an appointment. For, for To do that, go to hccs.edu forward slash finaid contact. If you have more questions about that, go to our homepage because you can click on the virtual lobby at hccs.edu. Click on the virtual lobby, get your questions answered. Second start registration. We've already started the spring semester of 2021. We're already a couple of weeks into it. Hard to believe, right? Well, second start is right around the corner. We have year round enrollment here at HCC and classes for second start begin on February the 16th. We have several ways that you can learn the two main ones uh, to stay safe online anytime. 
it sounds just exactly what it is. Uh, you can sign up for classes and literally take them at your convenience anytime. Online on a schedule, that is where you log into a class at a certain time, you interact with your professor, you see your classmates, and you get a little bit more interaction, it keeps you on a schedule. Uh, the Flex Campus option where you'd visit a campus for your class in very small classes, uh, that will happen hopefully after spring break. We'll have more on that depending on the COVID cases in Harris County, uh, more on that coming uh, next month. And the last one, lab-based courses. They're happening for the workforce instruction programs. Uh, for several of the programs that aren't hands-on, they're doing those online for safety. For more information on that and to sign up, sign up today, get the classes you want, especially the times you want, if you have one of those in-person labs, go to hccs.edu slash now for your registration needs. So I don't know, folks, if I were you and you're a Texans fan and you don't know about this yet, don't read the newspaper. Don't go to the Chronicle website. In fact, stay off social media today because, Frank, it's not a good day to be a Texans fan. What, what is going on with this organization? They have just lost the franchise quarterback, the best quarterback they ever had. How many years did it take them to get a quarterback? And now he's demanding a trade because they're an inept organization, or at least that's what he believes. But come on, man. This is ridiculous, Frank. I mean, look, if you're if you're looking at the twenty the twenty seventeen draft and you're looking at Deshaun Watson, Mitchell Trubisky, Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes just signed a a, a ten year half a billion dollar deal, so he's not going anywhere. Right. They're making their second AFC their third AFC championship appearance, second Super Bowl appearance in two years. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky has been a wash in Chicago. We we see that. But if you're Houston and you're looking at the success that Patrick Mahomes is having in Kansas City, the same draft as Deshaun Watson, it's not a Deshaun Watson problem. Deshaun Watson's numbers and Pat Mahomes' numbers are very comparable. Yeah. Very similar in in, in production. Well, Deshaun's was better this year in passing yardage, because but then again, he was passing from behind in most games. So he was throwing the ball a lot more because they were trying to catch up. But this is also way, true. If we, we look at his, his Texans no. INT ratio, it was third best in, in, in football. Yeah. So when you look at that and then you look at the lack of supporting cast, the the fraction of in the, in the, in the front office, a owner who doesn't let you know what he's doing, it just makes for a bad recipe. And Deshaun's 25. Yeah. He's not trying to be one of those guys when he's playing his butt off for the next five years and the team is going to be three and 12, four and 11, or four and 12, five and 11. It's, it's, it's not fair to him. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty bad when J.J. Watt walks off the field at the end of the last game, and it was on tape, and J.J. tells him that he's sorry that they wasted his year. Yeah, and it, 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 it's even worse when you have players come to Deshaun reportedly and saying, you know what, you deserve better. I wouldn't be mad yeah. if you asked for a trade. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, if, if you were to book a how to mishandle a franchise and a franchise quarterback, the Texans are the author of that book. It's really, really sad. I said it before, but I think it's an insult to dumpster fires to call them a dumpster fire. You know, <laughs> dumpster fires have it all together, at least. You know, they know they're a dumpster fire because they're a dumpster fire. The Texans, I mean, it's pretty bad when the city, the fans who haven't even stepped on a, a football field or even played football, maybe played a little Madden NFL, but that's it, can think ahead of the team and the owners and whoever's making the choices over them. I mean, the, 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 the DeAndre Hopkins trade was a disaster. And then to find out now that Deshaun found out about it from social media, just like he found out that uh, they'd hired a new general manager through social media. That's a train wreck. Let me tell you, let, let me tell you the, the opposite end of the spectrum. Let me tell you how plugged in Casey is with Patrick Mahomes. Last year in the draft, Andy Reid called Patrick Mahomes in. He was like, hey, here's our draft board. Who do you want for us to draft with our first-round draft pick? Pat said, Clyde Aaron's Hilaire, the running back. And guess what they did? They drafted Clyde Aaron's Hilaire. Like, they have, they have involved in every aspect of football operations. And when you have a star quarterback of that nature, you he's the CEO on the field. You want him, you want him involved in every aspect possible. Well, it's, I mean, it's an injury. You can't they they hired a coach. Yes, African American does great. As a black man, I'm glad to see him hire African American. Right. The man is 65, Todd. <laughs> I know. But here's the thing: the man hasn't even been a a, a coordinator. He's None. Been an assistant hasn't been coordinator, coach. and like 
if you're Deshaun Watson and you want a guy here to to help lead this franchise, what's the shelf life on this coach? Two yeah. years? Three years? Like he's not here five years. <laughs> it's it's just another dumpster fire in the day of the Texans. You know, it's it's just ridiculous, and it's so disheartening for a team that's for with a city that's such, you know, fanatical football fans, and you've got to deal with the Texans. Welcome to the Browns 2.0, because guess what? The Browns are good. The Texans have assumed the role of not even the Browns. They're the Bengals. Oh, man. You know, and it's just, it's terrible. But such is life. you got good things coming. Pro Bowls this weekend, and you got your Super Bowl next weekend. There you go. There you go. That. All right, Frank, we're going to wrap things up for today. Tomorrow, we got a good lineup. You're going to be here, too. Absolutely, absolutely. We do have a great lineup, and in that lineup, we continue the, the tw our 2021 Film Fridays, our peak at the Houston edition of the Sundance Film Festival, which has now officially begun when Jessica Green of the Houston Cinema Art Society joins us. They are hosts of the big event and others all year. Once again, our filmmaking students will all want to stay around and stay tuned to tomorrow. And we'll spotlight HCC's United Student Council with a visit from its parliamentarian, Elijah Roca. Uh, those guys are very busy keeping our students engaged and representative, represented. We'll hear from them tomorrow. Frank, thanks for being here today. Absolutely. My pleasure, man. Y'all get, get triple me this week. I'll be back tomorrow. Frank will be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. Most importantly, we hope you will join us tomorrow, 10 a.m. live on the Friday edition of Up to the Minute. Thank <laughs> you.